Guys, I saw The Woman King on Thursday and I was just floored. <music> Hey everyone, I'm Roxanne and welcome back to my channel. So last week I went to see The Woman King in theaters and it was amazing. No, it really was. It was incredible. And I'm not just saying that. Actually, I didn't know a lot about this movie before I went to go and see it. I had seen some Instagram posts by Viola Davis about it and I was looking for a movie to go to and watch in theaters. So I said, well, let's try it then. And I was literally floored. I did not know what I was getting myself into. It was so good. First of all, I will say Viola Davis is my girl. I loved her in the movie Doubt with Meryl Streep. I loved her in Fences with Denzel Washington. I mean, this is a woman who clearly knows and understands the craft of acting. This woman knows how to bring you to tears with a performance. And as a dark-skinned black woman, she's really had to prove herself to get where she is today. Because she's not like other actresses, that fit that delicate white standard of beauty probably started off modeling and because they're really pretty they get offered a lot of opportunities. Viola Davis's appeal has always had to come from the depth of her performance. I remember her as a mayor in A Law Abiding Citizen with Gerard Butler. She's always been able to portray these very strong female characters and don't get me wrong I think Viola is a very beautiful woman. She really has this air of strength in her characters. But we all know how Hollywood is when it comes to how they cast dark-skinned black women. They're good for certain roles but not others, particularly when it comes to being the romantic lead or the love interest. You've got to be a Zoe Saldana or a Halle Berry, then you can be a Bond girl or the love interest. But for actresses like Viola Davis, they tend not to get those kinds of roles. Which brings me back to the movie at hand. So The Woman King is actually based loosely emphasis on loosely on an actual all-female militia group that existed in the 1800s that fought for the West African kingdom of Dahomey. The all-female army was called the Agogie and these women really existed. They're a historical fact. As a matter of fact, the female militia in Black Panther was actually inspired by and modeled after the Agogie of the Dahomey kingdom. Which made sense because as I was watching it, the movie definitely had a Black Panther vibe. It was kind of like watching a super superhero movie. Now I didn't watch Black Panther myself because frankly I'm not really a fan of fantasy and superhero movies. I just find them a bit too fantastical. But I did see a lot of shorts and clips from Black Panther showing off Wakanda's all-female military which were called the Dora Milaje and the same kind of fighting choreography. These really elaborate sword and spear movements. Well it made sense that it was very similar because the Dora Milaje were based off the Agogie. So yeah the movie was like Black Panther but without all the magic. So Viola Davis plays Naniska who is the general of the Agogie and you have the main protagonist Nawi played by Tuso Mbedu who because she's not pleasing to the potential husband of her arranged marriage her father basically gives her away to the Agogie to be a part of their military since she's not wifey material. Then you have other supporting characters like Izogi played by Lashana Lynch and Amenza played by Sheila Atim who are both also senior officers and have been serving for at least as long as Naniska. Now this movie has received a lot of backlash because people are complaining oh it's not historically accurate and the Dahomey people participated in the slave trade and sold black Africans to Europeans so there was a hashtag boycott the woman king trending on social media. Now I get it if you're looking for historical accuracy don't watch this movie because these people took a lot of creative license with this movie. But it made the plot really interesting. There are a lot of interesting twists and turns when it comes to the storyline. So much so that you pretty much knew it was more about dramatic effect than about sticking to any kind of factual history. And Viola Davis and her husband admit to this. They never pretended this was about making any kind of accurate historical portrayal. So here's a quote from Viola Davis herself about the movie. She said, if we just told a history lesson which we very well could have that would be a documentary. Unfortunately people wouldn't be in the theaters doing the same thing we saw this weekend. Most of the story is fictionalized. It has to be. Now I watched this YouTuber called Black Conservative Perspective completely
completely attack this film and say it didn't even acknowledge that the Dahomey Kingdom was complicit in the slave trade. Now that's where I have to say, stop right there. The movie totally acknowledges the fact that the Dahomey people participated in the slave trade. It does not portray the Dahomey as this morally righteous kingdom fighting against the evil of the Europeans. I had to comment on the video and say, um, you clearly didn't watch the movie because the issue of the complicity of the Dahomey kingdom in the slave trade is brought up and is very much crucial to the plot line. It's Viola's character, Naniska, that brings this up to King Gezo and argues that they need to stop selling Africans to the European traders and instead try to sell their gold and palm oil. Actually, King Gezo has a really long conversation with their Portuguese trading partners about wanting to stop dealing in human cargo. Now, in reality, did the Dahomey Kingdom actually do that? Probably not. I'm sure they probably continued in the slave trade without batting an eye because as it was stated in the film, trading humans was far more lucrative than trading gold and palm oil. But when it comes to this part, they fictionalized it and made Naniska's character be a force for change in what was a very dark part of human history. Now really, when you're watching the film, you really have to watch it with a grain of salt because I mean, at one point they had Izogi's character going toe to toe with a male Dahomey warrior in some kind of challenge where they're pressing a double edged spear into each other, seeing who will flinch first. I mean, realistically, I don't care how strong you are as a woman, you could be ready for the MMA, but you go head to head with a male equivalent, chances are the male is going to win. But in the movie, Izogi is completely badass and wins the challenge. So I mean, come on, this is fictional. But I'll tell you what I love about this movie. Besides the fact that the characters were incredible, you really fell in love with them. The characters were also believable in their histories when you learn more about them. But besides that, I think this movie really revolutionizes the way we see dark-skinned women portrayed in Hollywood. It was revolutionary. These women were so strong and heroic. I mean, I remember one of the earliest scenes in the movie. After they win this battle, they're marching back into Dahomey early in the morning and everyone in the village is just in awe. And the shots they use of these women walking back into the village, just the cinematography. I got goose pimples. I really did. And I low-key had a crush on Izogi's character. She was just so badass. Everyone was just so badass. It was 100% unadulterated badassery throughout the entire film. And you know what I thought was just deeply ironic about this film? A lot of time, black women, particularly dark-skinned black women, are looked at as being too strong, too masculine. They're not demure enough. They're not graceful enough. They're too muscular. But in this film, it's like the strength that black women have always been criticized for fits the storyline so perfectly. It's like these black women were born for this role. Society has been trying to fit dark-skinned black women into this box of delicate femininity, which they were probably never really meant to fit in. But finally, this is really the role they were meant for. Black women are Amazonian warriors. They are warriors. They're strong, they're tough, because they have to be. Yet at the same time, especially with Naniska's character, you see this vulnerability as well. And this is another thing, and this isn't a spoiler because Viola Davis already revealed this in an interview. Naniska is an SA survivor. In the story, she was R-worded in one of the worst ways possible. And I know that gives her a really traumatic past, but also at the same time, it makes these characters a lot more realistic to me. Because at the end of the day, even though all these women are so badass, they're still women living in a very hyper-masculine patriarchal culture. And sexual violence is a reality for women. It is today and it was back then and they don't make these characters so badass that they're invincible and things like that don't happen to them. I mean, even though it seems relatively progressive to have an all-woman militia, this is still a male-dominated world that they're in. Arranged marriages are still a thing. Child brides are still a thing. Female sexual slavery is still a thing. Here's another thing I really liked. I like the juxtaposition of the Agogie warriors against King Gezo's concubines. You can clearly see the difference. The wife wives are slender and demure and graceful, and they're dressed in silk and gold and jewelry, and they're clearly girly girls. And then you have the agogie, and they're just jacked. I don't know how much physical training these women went through, but everyone was just 
jacked. I mean, the muscle tone. Viola Davis was a beast. And that juxtaposition just made the agoje look even cooler. Like, you ladies stay over there in the palace while we go kick some ass. The agoje are like the guardians and the concubines are like the real housewives of Atlanta or basketball wives. Overall, I would recommend anyone see this movie. Don't overthink it. This is not about historical accuracy. This is not about portraying Africans as the good guys and Europeans as the bad guys. They've taken a historical group of people and they've decided to build a story loosely based on these characters. And I would say it's a pretty good story. There are fight scenes, there's character development, there's plot twists, there's great cinematography, and there's a lot of female empowerment badassery. I mean, what more do you want? I will support my girl Viola Davis. She's my girl for life. Love Viola and I love the movie. Anyway, what do you guys think? Did you see The Woman King? Did you like it? Or do you think it's just another move by Hollywood to pander to the black community? Let me know in the comments below. And please, if you like this video and want to see more of my content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Laters.